Full time man a hustler Stepped in looking like the mafia That's not again, that's the familiar Bro, recognize bro, you're not familiar uh, Holy Spirit is my counselor You know that feeling when he's proud of ya That's not again, that's the familiar Set my eyes upon the king, that's how I'm seeing ya So you better focus You better focus Every single day, man, you know I gotta focus Some of the things that I've been pushing Is discussion on race the discussion on healthcare systems, the discussion on, you know, education systems, many different things as it relates to us as human beings. But one of the other things that I push, if you watch my Instagram, is financial literacy. Why is this important? If you look at the systems in which are put in place today, which have been based upon prejudices and discrimination, which I've probably discussed in another video, that's moved by money. Crying, getting upset, walking around pleading for change is beautiful. But sometimes we have to think, we have to put our money where our mouth is. This is why the boycotting of the buses in America had a very big impact in making some change because we hit the banks and we hit the pockets of the government where it hurts. But one of the things that we need is financial literacy as a society, particularly in the young. We're going around protesting, but we still go home and we play around with our money and, it's, and then we got nothing left at the end of the month. We spend our money unnecessarily on things we don't need to, to impress people we don't know because we don't exercise financial literacy. And financial literacy is not taught in our schools. This is why I'm saying to people, stop waiting for the education system to teach your children what they need. They don't get taught how to cook. They don't get taught life skills. They don't get taught how to deal with relationships. They don't get taught about racism. They don't get taught about financial literacy, mortgages, how to open up their banks, how to invest, how to save, how to budget. Why do you think they haven't taught us these things? You're spending all your years, all your um, uh, um, important years of your development in school and you leave with a very few bits of information that actually can help you. That's a problem. So we as a people with our own children, I'm, I'm talking to every race now, the people need to realise that we need to get financially literate. Financial literacy. And before I go into that, I need to give a disclaimer. My name is Costanza MC, okay? I am not a financial advisor, but I am an advocate for saving and investing and for building a legacy. And we can go on Google and find what we need, but, when, but really do we go on Google and find what we need? We really don't. We don't use Google and books and YouTube to our advantage. Every so often it's okay to watch a music video. Every so often it's okay to watch a vlog. But when are we going to start spending time reading about important things at the same time? This is why I'm saying around the world to my millennials and so on and so forth. You have access to information. Use it to your advantage. Don't stay in the same position you are 50 years down the line and live with regret. Now's the time to make a change. So financial literacy is the ability to understand and effectively manage your finances and make good decisions. This is why I'm saying when I discuss this with people, they think I'm talking about having a lot of money. You don't need a million pounds to be financially literate. It means doing good with what you have. You can be on a £10,000 salary, you can be on a £50,000 salary, you can be on a million pound salary, but a lot of people who have a big salaries are not financially literate. You know a good example? People who win the lottery. Research them. Do Google, type, open your phone now, and type in, pause this video, go on Google, type in and type in how the lottery winners are in the, a year after they've won the money. A lot of them end up bankrupt because the financial literacy didn't come with the wealth or didn't come with the riches. So every single one of us, whatever age you are, whatever race you are, whatever socioeconomic background, get 
financially literate. In this, I mean budget, track your spending, pay off your bad debts, because not all debt is bad, but that's a different video. Understand mortgages, rent, insurance, tax, the importance of saving, the importance of investing, the importance of living below your means so that you can build a legacy. Because we as a society have been programmed to live in the past and to live in the present, which is important in some ways, but we keep forgetting to look to the future. We need to think about the future. And why did I bring this up in this climate of situations around the world, police brutality, racism, etc.? You know what's important? Because the legislation and the governments are moved by money. You need economic power to make a change. Either it means boycotting, either it means pulling your money out of certain systems and putting it into other institutions, either it means investing, building up your wealth and making your own businesses. It all stems from financial literacy. Yes, talking is important. Yes, protesting is important. Yes, having uh, discussions at home is important. But we need to take physical actions and economic actions to bring change. This is why I keep pushing people investing in shares. And once again, I'm going to say this again for the people in the back that want to get confused. I am not a financial advisor. But I am ad an advocate financial. I am an advocate for financial literacy. Go into Google, speak to the people that can help you and search for the information. Research, research, research is out there. Students, research, I'm a student at this point right now, I'm near the end of my studies, but doesn't mean that I can't start looking into things before I'm in, uh, in the workplace. We keep waiting for the 100k salary to get financially literate. But then you get to the 100k salary and you realise all your money's gone because your spending habits are not correct. You need to get that correct. The wealth that is built can influence the mindsets of governments and can impact the legislations and policies which uphold the prejudices that we are fighting with today in 2020. So if people really want to make a change, we really need to put our money where our mouth is. Don't be fearful. Don't think it's certain people's groups of things to do. Wealth is not for you. Sh shares are not for you. Investing is not for you. It's all f it's for everybody. But think about it. Why do you think it's not taught in schools? Because they don't want everyone to know. Look into financial literacy, people. Please do. Whatever your age is, research that now. So today, I'm going to go into a bit more information in regards to something I like to do. And I started it, I think, last year, early last year, but I can't remember when it was. Something I like to do is to invest in shares or stocks. A little bit a month. This is what I'm saying. You don't need lots of money to invest in shares. You can put a tenner a month in. If you can, you can put £100 a month, you can put a fiver a month. But always put money in that you're not afraid to lose. This is why I'm saying research, 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 and contact very helpful financial advisors to give you the information. There's also YouTube, there's also Google, there's also books out there. Do the work. Make your money work for you. So in regards to, like I said, the money you put in and there being risks, risks are there. Make that clear to yourself. And that's why it's important to have a risk assessment plan and know where you can, uh, don't move past your means, know where your hands can reach. Because the markets do go up and the markets do go down. But you have to understand how to deal with that. 
So this is why when markets go down, a lot of people start buying. Why? Because things become cheaper. And then when markets go up, you make those gains. Investing is very important. So some people talk to me and they go, oh, I do savings. That's lovely. Kudos. Savings are lovely jubbly, mate. But because of inflation, a very few of us are going to make much money out of these savings. Now, savings are very important. Okay. Make sure you save because that's part of financial literacy. But also realize there's an important need to invest some of your money too. Make your money grow. And when you have the financial literacy and you've done the research, you know how to make the money grow. You know how much money you can make grow. You know where to put it in. Research, research, research. When you do invest in shares, if you're moved to invest in shares and stocks, I really advise you to look into it. Regardless of if you're working, if you're a student, if you're uh, uh, melanated, if you're not melanated, I really ask you to do this is you need to look into diversification. Diversification is mean, it means, effectively, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You can't come to people and start moaning, and you put all your money into Coca-Cola, and then everything's lost, and then start crying. That's not, that's not logical. Put your money into different systems, and into different fields, and into different industries, and this helps to um, reduce the risk a little bit. So that if one goes up, another one goes down, but you're like, I can hack it. They're balancing out. And this is why investing in shares is a long-term thing that I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to make money quickly. If I make a lot of money quickly, that's a blessing. But I want to build a legacy, and that's the beauty of compound interest of your, uh, of your investments, building money for you. And secondly, dividends. And people will be like, oh, I've never heard of this word. What's dividends? I'm talking to you young people. This is ain't no complex thing. Dividends is a part of the uh, company's profits that they give to you maybe every quarter or every month or once a year. So not only have you bought a portion of the company, you also can get dividends with some companies where they give you additional parts of the profit. Where do you see that coming? Do you see in your workplace that you go into work and the person who's your manager puts on your desk, here's a thousand pounds or here's 10 pounds or here's hundred pounds and you're going, what's this for? Oh, we just want to give you something extra. Where do you see that happening? Do you go to your bank, take out money and the bank goes to you, we're going to give you back another 10 pounds on top? Never heard of it. If they do, please let me know. So I'll go right there today. Make your money work for you. And once again, let's look at the meaning of shares. Owning a part of a company. We spend our money fine and we're very comfortable to spend 200 quid at night. We're very comfortable to spend all our money uh, with Uber, we're very comfortable to spend all our money at McDonald's, we're very comfortable every day to spend a fiver on Starbucks coffee, but we can't put a few bob a week into shares, into the same companies that you're, you're basically part of the people that's building up these companies, why not make some of it yourself? You put all your money into Nike, but Nike gives nothing back to you, except items which most of them depreciate in value. You put all your money into spending buying your BMW, but a lot of that depreciates in value. This is why I'm saying, people, young people, you're buying into Fashion Nova, you're buying into, uh, uh, um, I don't even know what the, sh the shops are right now, where you buy clothes and you buy shoes and you buy, uh, you buy all, every week you're buying uh, um, takeaways and getting food delivered, into buying from companies when you could have the same money you're spending frivolously now and put into some of the shares of these companies. The consumers of the world make these businesses grow. So why not be a part owner of these companies? It doesn't matter how much percent you own. If it's 0.0001%, you own part of that company. 
you are a shareholder in that company. That is a very empowering thing. Let's, why not? Why don't we look into that? So people look into these things, go on YouTube, read your books, and there's certain apps, for example, that are helpful. I've done, uh, for, uh, what's it, for, um, Trading 212 and Free Trade. You can maybe use those apps, but there's other ones out there in America, in the UK, around the world. I'm not advocating for certain apps. The only reason why I use it is because I was able to get a free share. But with this YouTube, I have to make it clear I do not get monetized in terms of an ad uh, because I'm advertising for certain companies. They don't even know I exist at this point because I just started the YouTube channel a week ago. I'm legit saying you, I'm telling you this because you benefit and I want our people to grow. I want our young people to grow. I want us to become stronger economically. And then we can bring change. We can implement things. We can bring uh, uh, companies down to their knees to get and put stuff in place and say, no, you can't disrespect us anymore. This is the money talking. We've got to get the money from somewhere. This is why I keep saying, make your money work for you. So in closing, I speak to everybody around the world. Don't ignore this video. Don't think it's nothing to do with you and then go home and get upset with the coins are, are, are struggling. You've got the struggle coins. Make your money work for you, particularly when you don't have dependents. Make a change. Break the curse. Break the generational wealth gap and start now so that in the next 30 years, you have built something for yourself and your family and your grandkids, for example. You know how some of these wealthy companies have been the way they are? obviously from oppression of certain people, certain groups, and, you know, stealing things. But also, they kept it going with the compound interest, building, building, building up the nest egg. And so now, when they were worth 10 million, they're worth 100 million in, the, in, in years to come. This is the same approach we have to do to our finances. How can we make our lives easier? What can we pull down? What can we spend on less? Do we really have to spend a tenner a day on food when we have food at home? Why can't we bring sandwiches? Why can't we bring our own stuff? Why can't we sacrifice a couple days of a week bringing our own food and then putting that into shares or putting that into our savings? But then we say we don't have money to do anything. And then we say we don't have money to invest. To my people, once again, who don't have dependents, the ones who have dependents is a bit more tricky. This is why I'm saying do this now when you don't have dependents on you. Set stuff up now to make things in place to create your legacy. Look at, pause the video. Actually, let me say it before you pause the video. But think about this before you pause the video and say to yourself, look around you, look at your bank account, look in your purse. Do you really want to be in the same position in the next 10 years or the next 30 years time? Do you really want to be 50 years old questioning all your life choices? Do you really want to wish you could go back and turn back time? Then that means you need to make a change. We always are spending on things we don't need. If it means cutting back, going to Starbucks every single day to buy your coffee, when you could go to Tesco, make your own coffee and bring it in a cup. Why you got to be going to Starbucks, spending £25 a week on coffee, but you can't put £25 a week into shares? It's a bit odd to me. I think your priorities are all amiss. All me people trying to look fly, trying to look hot, trying to look good for the gram, trying to style it out, wasting money on these all these luxury items, but you ain't got money to put into any of these shares. When I look in your bank accounts and the miners, you're going on your overdraft to spend, to buy all these items, to look and stunt for the ground. Okay, that doesn't seem logical to me. If you're really hard, if you're really a hustler, where's the money? And I ain't talking about illegitimate money, um, um, bad stuff, illegal things. I'm talking about legit money. Where's the stacks? Where's the coins, fam? Stop catching flights and your bank account's empty. 
Stop trying to look like you're going around the world or you're, you have all the things you have to show off to your friends because you want to be the, the one that everyone likes. Bun that. It's nothing to do with them. Because in the next 10 years' time, if those are the same types of people you're around, they ain't going to have your back by then. Stop trying to stunt, young folk. Everyone needs to get on this. Whilst we're sitting in our homes discussing ways to change the systems, whilst we're walking in protest, whilst we're standing up for legislation, whilst people are doing sit-ins, whilst people are calling different companies to action to tell them about the um, racial divide in their businesses, we need to do some of the financial stuff on the side at the same time. It's not complicated. You just need to take up a mobile. You just need to take up your tablet. You just need to go on your laptop and open it up. Because when I tell you, let's go and find out the latest movie, you can find it on the internet. But you can't download an app. Very confusing to me. We need to get our priorities right. We need to get that fixed, people. We need to stop, stop stunting. We need to stop pretending. We need to stop trying to have the illusions of success. We need to get our priorities right, people. We need to do that. We need to do that now. So I'm telling you people, don't ignore what I'm saying. Every single one of you watching this, spread this video and help each other to grow. Stop keeping what you have to yourself. Expand your knowledge. Teach your siblings. Teach your parents. Teach your children. Teach your friends. Teach your work colleagues. Teach your enemies if you want to. But let's get the word spreading on financial literacy saving, investing, budgeting, making your money grow for you, dividends, compound interest, putting it into index funds. Look into these terms and find things out for yourself. Stop waiting for people to baby you. Stop waiting for people to hold your hand. They don't want your hand to be held. They don't want you to understand what's going on in the financial system because the finance governs the world. This is why you have certain billionaires telling people, telling countries to do things because they got the money. It's not necessarily that they know any more information than the common person walking around the world, but because they have the wealth, the world's moved by them. That's not a fair society, but moaning about the system all the time ain't going to change anything. We need to do stuff as well. Build stuff up for yourself at the same time. Have the power to say, we're going to tell you to do this now as a company or we're taking our money out and boycotting you for a such and such period of time. We need to think about that as well. Loving is important. Caring is important. Community is important. But we need money. You need to buy food. You need to pay for your health insurance if you're in other countries. In the UK, thankfully, of the NHS, but we don't know how long that's going to be there for. You need to pay your tax. You need to, you need to pay your car insurance. You need to pay for your kid's school uniform. You need to pay transport to get to and to. We're paying so much to get to and to, uh, to and from work. To make the money to pay for getting to and to to and from work doesn't that make isn't anyone a bit confused about that but we're quite happy to go through the cycle and the same way over and over again the cycle must be broken mm -hmm.